Good morning, we are continuing our Masechet Chagiga, and we are on Daf Chaf He Amud Aleph 25a, starting the second Mishnah of the stringencies of Truma over Kodesh. Even though that we had 10, 11 items of the stringencies of Kodesh, Mibat Truma, now we have at least one item that we're going to be discussing that Truma could be more chamur, more stringent than Kodesh, and that's the Mishnah that we started. Today's Amud is being learned for Zchut of Yeshua ben Dina Diana and Yael bat Rivka. And also, today's Amud is being learned, Leilui Nishmat Sipora bat Yitzchak, that her Neshama should have an Adiyah Amin. So we spoke about the fact that by Kodesh, during the course of the entire year, an Amaretz is Neeman. And we said the reason is not really an intrinsic reason. The reason is, we have, we've got a problem. If you tell Amaretz, I'm not eating your teruma, he says, okay, get lost. He's going to go find his own Amaretz friend of Kohen. He's going to give it to him. He trusts him. Hazaku Baruch. But by Kodesh, there's only... One Beit HaMikdash, we want to keep it that way. If you do not accept his Kodesh, he's going to go build his own Mizbeach, said the Gemara, and make his own Efeh Paraduma, and it's going to become its own religion. So therefore, he cannot reject an Amaret in a way that he has no way out. So therefore, we have this built-in Kula, that we accept his Kodshim, his Nesachim, that he brings for wine of Korbanot, his Shemen, that he brings for the Shemen of Korban Minha, we accept it. If he says it's Tahor, we believe him that he has been careful with the Tahara. Then, that's only by Kodesh. By Truma said the Mishnah, during the course of the time that people actually produce those things, that means Beshat HaGitot, which is the time that people press um, Geffen, press the... the, the um, um, the grapes to, to get to get wine, and the time of the press of olives in order to get oil, those times people are very careful. Even Amaret is careful in Tara, therefore, even for Teruma, we believe them when they say that I have been careful, and this oil or this um, wine is, is Tahor, they are believed. So says the Gemara, there are two dots in the middle of the Amut, that at the time of the press of the olives or the grapes, they are ne'eman, they are believed, even for teruma, not only for Kodesh, says the Gemara, or Mini. This seems to stand in direct contrast with a different writer. HaGomer Zetav, Yeshayer Kupa Ahad, V'Tenena Le'ani Kohen, and Amaretz, that is, finishing up his zetim. That means, we mentioned before, that before something is nigmar, if it's still on tree and growing, it's going to not be mekabel tumah. So a person that now is finishing his process of, of uh, taking the zetim, the olives, to the press, in order to be yotzeh teruma, everything that you have, you need to take teruma from. So how do you take truma from your olives? How do you do it? Do you make oil and then go take a, a certain amount of it, truma, teremi mea, one one fifth one you know one fiftieth, which is two out of ten. Teruma is teremi mea, even though the Doraita, teruma doesn't have really doesn't really have a size. You could give a little grain on the whole field the teruma mi But there are three Shiurim da Chazal mentioned uh, Ayin Yafe, Benoni, and Ayin Ra. Ayin Yafe is a person that gives one fortieth. Ayin, uh, Ayin Ra is one sixtieth, one fiftieth is the Benoni. So that's Teremi Mea, two percent. That would be Teruma. So how do you do it? Do you make the oil and then take a little oil as Teruma to the Kohen? Well, then the coin has to trust that whatever you did, you did it right, and this shaman is actually tahor. Or if he doesn't trust you, if the coin doesn't trust you, what can you do to be sure that the coin is going to accept it? Well, you take um, 
all 98% of your your olives, you take 98% of your olives and you press them, you make oil for yourself. And the other 2% of your olives, you don't press. You take it to the Kohen, you say, Hazaku Baruch, you see over here, I didn't touch it, it hasn't touched water, it's fresh olives off of the tree, you do your own thing. And the oil that you, you make out of this, part of it you take as my teruma, and then that, that will be your se teruma. That would be if the Kohen would not trust me, the Amaharetz. So what does the, the Brayta over here say? It says they, they, they have Amaharetz that has an olive field. The way he has to do teruma is the second one. He takes his olive to the press, and then a part of it he leaves over. He takes it to the Kohen and says, Ha-ham, Look, no water has come upon these uh, olives ever, you could tell. Here it is, and he makes the oil, and he takes the ruma for me, the Amaritz, which means he doesn't trust me. So if you're telling me, Beshada Gitot, that when I'm pressing olive in that season, every Amaritz is trusted, we're talking about Shada Gitot, I'm taking my olives to the press. <laughs> I should be Neman based on our Mishnah, right? So you see that Amaretz even Beshat Gitod is not Neeman. Now we've got a problem. Our Mishnah says Amaretz is believed in the time of the press, the, the production of the production season of olive oil and wine. Every Amaretz is Neeman. And then you see from here that even, even in the time of the press, in the time, the season of getting olive oil, the Amaretz is not believed. He has to take the olives to the Kohen. You see the, the serious problem over here. It says the Gemara, It's not a question. Habecharpi, habealfi. So why? You think uh, whenever an Amaretz decides to bring uh, his his olives to the press, it's going to be a shat agito? No, it has a season. It has a season when the majority of people are bringing their olives to the press, and then there is always the uh, Persian time, right? Mm. The old people who are running late, they're coming like a week after everyone finished, they say, oh, this is still open, right? That's, when a person comes late, and the majority are done, that's no longer Keser Shad Agitot, we don't trust this person. Even though that for him is Shad Agitot, is not subjective, it's objective. That's when people are bringing their olives, their grapes to the press, if you miss that window, even though that for you is Shad Hagito, for you is the time that you are pressing, you are doing your grapes or your olives, it's no longer trusted. So says the Gemara, Ava le Rav Ada Ba'ava Kigormai, tell me who is considered late. Says, I know my family sometimes uh, brings it a little bit late. Is that considered late? W- what's late? It says, the Gemara, he answered him, the ultimate answer, he says, Exactly, like your father, your father's household, when they bring it, that's considered late. If your father would have been an Amaret, we would not have trusted him for the teruma, even Beshat Hagitot, which in the time that he is pressing, his olives is late. You miss the window of the majority of people who bring their olives, their grapes to the press, you have lost that, that window of time that Amearits are believed. Again, we saw this a little bit yesterday, last year as well. You remember that we spoke about the fact that if Amearits is late, he missed the window, he comes there, he says, oh, sorry, Mehila. He says, what do I do? He says, you could bring it next year. The same barrel you leave it for next year is, is a window Chazal made, even though that logically it may or may not make sense for this specific barrel, because you can leave it until next year, me good that you're believed for the new ones, you could be believed for the old one if you say that I kept this completely out of touch and tahor, you will be believed. So says the Gemara, Rav Yosef Amar, Begelila Shanu, he answers a different answer. You remember how we said that by Kodesh, in Yehuda, you are believed in Galil is a problem because you have a ritzua of the Eres, the land of Kutim in Galil, which will become a trouble, a problem. 
So says the Gemara in the second attempt, the second answer, the Teruma also has the same thing. That in Yehuda they are believed, in Galil they are not believed. So where you have this second bright thought that talks about, that, that talks about a Amaretz having to give the actual olives to the Kohen, and he's not believed even in the time of Gitot, in the time of the olive press, he's talking about Galil. Had it been in Yehuda, that's our Mishnah. In Yehuda, you're believed because again, people will bring their terumah to the Beit Hamikdash, and so they're always careful. They're always careful, and therefore we believe them in the time that they are careful. But in Galil, they have to pass through Eretz Amim, anyways, becomes Tameh. Therefore, we don't have the same level of um, of Neimanut in Galil. So it says the Gemara. It's about Abaye. Abaye asked the question. Abaye says, you want to tell me that in Yehuda people are believed, in Galil they're not believed? I have a Beferu Shirai, I have a clear cut proof that even in Galil, Beshat HaGitot, in the time of olive press, and time of, of, of wine making, the season, even in Galil, the Amares is believed. How do I know? Says Abaye, Avar Hayarden Vegalil, Harehen Ki Yehuda, sorry, Avar Hayarden Vegalil, and the other side, the east side of um, of Yarden, of Jordan River, and the Galil also, there are three areas in Eretz Israel, there are two in Eretz Israel, actual Eretz Israel, it's Yehuda and Galil, and then you have Avar Hayarden, the east side of the Jordan River. So it says the, it says the Brayta, by Avar Hayarden, and by Galil, you have also a Nehmanut in Sha'at HaGitot. How he reads is like this. Every Yarden and Galil, Haren Ki Yehuda, they are exactly tenth amount to Yehuda. Halachically speaking, the Kassel like Yehuda, Nehmanin al Hayayin v'Sha'at Hayayin, they are believed on the Tahara of wine in the time of the, uh, the, the press of of. Uh, of, of, of wine, and they are believed on Tahara of Shemen in the time of the press of I, olives. Right? When you have the production of wine, you have the production of oil, that season they are believed even in Galil and even in Everayarden. So it says the Gemara, Avalorayayin Beshat Shemen, but it's not that the season um, <laughs> extends itself to the other season. In other words, you may have thought, and this is a very interesting question that the, the, the Bratay is, is, is warning, is, is addressing, that you may have thought that, well, when the Amaris is careful because he's busy doing the press of his olive, he's careful in everything. He's keeping ta'ara like a chaver, like a tabi hachat. So therefore, he should, at that season, he should also be neman, he should also be believed on wine. Because what's the difference? The Bible says no. When they are careful with the production of olive, they're believed on olives only. Not on geffen, not on wine. And when they are working with wine, it's the time of production of wine, they are neman on wine, but if they go and do some olives, they're not going to be neman. Everything has its own season in which the amaris is neman. But at the end of the day, you see, that even in Everhayar then, and certainly in Galil, the Amaris is Neman in the time, in the season of the olive press, in the season of wine press, and therefore, that's a bias that, that stands in sharp, direct contradiction with, with suggestion, the second suggestion of the Gemara. You wanted to say that by Teruma should be like Kodesh, that in Galil, you should not be Neman, you should not be believed, says the, says the bias says the Gemara, it's clear cut bright and says, even in Ever I have there, and certainly in Galil, you are Neman, you are believed in the time, the season of the production of olive oil or or the wine. Okay, so says the Gemara, what do you do with that? That's like a punch in the gut. It's a, it's a direct contradiction with the su- suggestion of the Gemara. It's like a, a, a bomb kasha. So says the Gemara, you're correct. El uh, the first wide line, 
Kedushani not Meikara. So says, correct. The second answer we gave was wrong, and we stick to the first answer, and the first answer is, the Amaris is Neeman, on the Tahara, and, and the purity of his production, only in the time, if he's not late. If you are going to come late, and miss the window, even though that for you is considered, your time of press, we're not going to believe you on the Tahara because you missed the window of production of the majority of people. So says the Gemara. Abru Agitot Vabadim, we learned the Mishnah, a very interesting halacha. We learned that if the time, the window passed, then what happens? If the window of time passed, and now you bring your Shemin or your wine to the Kohen, the Kohen says, uh, Mechila. The date passed. I can't accept it from you anymore because I don't know if it's tower. What's the remedy? Wait until next year. Right? And we said that according to Tosafot, even if the coin knows that this is the same barrel, still fine. So now the Gemara says, wow, that's interesting. How about pushing the envelope a little bit more? How about if the Kohen by mistake accepted it? Right? He was too nice, he was embarrassed, like, uh, he took, the, he, he took the, 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 the wine or the oil, now what? <coughs> is, that, is there any remedy for that? Says the Gemara. If the time of the, the production, the majority of the people's production passed, and now Amaretz brings you a barrel of wine, like Abelena, the Mishnah said, you do not accept it from him. But the Amaretz could leave it for next gat, next, next production season, and then he could bring the same chavit and it's good to go. Now, Baumine, Merav Sheshet, the Gemara says, they asked of Sheshet, last line, Avar mahu. How about if the court accepted it from him? Right? He made a mistake, should not have. But he did. Now what? Can the Kohen leave it for next Gat? Can the Kohen leave it for the next season? I say, well, I could have told him to bring it back next season. So what? I accepted it. I'll leave it for next season. Is that okay or not? So says Rav Sheshet, It's a mission. We learned this. How did we learn this? Because there's the Mishnah in Masechet Demai, Perek Vav, Mishnah Tet. Chaver v'amaretz, she'ar shu'ed avihem, amaretz. Imagine, two boys, two brothers, inherited the state of their father. The father passed away, the father was amaretz. And the sons, one of them comes to Amud Yomi, one of them doesn't. One of them is Haver, one of them is amaretz. Nebach, unfortunately, right? So what do you do now? Well, he left a whole lot of estate, and anything that is ra'uy lekabel tum'ah, you ought to assume that is tame. Anything that is not ra'uy lekabel tum'ah, he never got wet with those seven different types of liquids, didn't become tame, so his flower is good to go. So how do you divide the, the assets? How do you divide the estate? Now, let me give a little preface here. There is an entire sugya called Yesh Berera, En Berera, one of the most sophisticated and deep concepts throughout Shas. And we're certainly not going to get through the core concept of Berera right now, but for our purposes, sometimes, retroactively, you could say, well, this is my part, portion of uh, inheritance, and that's your portion of inheritance. Right? Sometimes you're allowed to say, well, he, we inherited the entire estate, but this was my part. And retroactively, we could say, oh, it's my part, that's your part. Sometimes you can't do that. And here is a problem, because if I am a Tamehacham, and my brother is the Amaritz, if I have a portion, myself, of something that's Tameh, even though that he doesn't care about Tumah, if I give it to him to eat it, my portion, I switch it with his portion, right? I say, oh, I like these things that you have. Can we swap the, the things? So he's, for him, it doesn't make a difference. So he says, yeah, sure, why not? 
And now I give him something tame, and I take something tahor. I'm like, ah, hazak baruch, now I could eat this. And he's going to go eat that. What is that problem? Problem of? You're not supposed to put stumbling block in front of a blind. Surprisingly, somebody showed him old when the Pasuk says, The Marad Arshins, this, they shouldn't give etza shena hogenit. Shouldn't give a bad advice to somebody. So if you give bad advice to someone or you make them um, transgress something like this, you're certainly in transgression of a biblical <coughs> prohibition. But it, according to Zabri Shalim, if you put an actual stumbling block in front of an actual blind person, you may not be over on this. Because when it get it. When someone is blind in a matter, you don't make them stumble. So this guy, brother, is blind in this topic. He doesn't know Tumar from Tara. And if you tell him that swab, he says, Hazaku Baruch. How, ma- how much? And he's going to go eat that. And he's go. I caused him to eat something that halachically is Tameh. So that's Lifnei Verloti Ten So I'm not supposed to swap with him something that is my Helik for his chelik. Something that's my portion of inheritance to something that's his portion of inheritance. Now, that's block number one, concept number one. Concept number two is, when somebody dies without clear um, direction of their estate, every bit of the estate, every bit of their assets is divided to everyone. That halachically inherits them. And then, by, by the way, once we're at this opening of parentheses, every person should sign a halachic um, will wow. b- before they pass away, because it becomes very complicated after death. They should, they should actually speak to someone, and beforehand, you know, p- people buy themselves plot, before it's actually a segula for Arichud Yamim, this is not a segula of a Hasidic segula, it's a well-documented, legitimate segula to, to, pay, to buy a plot of land, for they also should they should think about this as well. It would solve so many halachic problems, aside from so many fights in the family, but it solves a lot of halachic problems. Every Jew should, should have a halachic will. It right? gets around all the problems. There are a lot of problems halachically with, with, with uh, the way the world views and the, the way the parents want their thing to be versus the halachic thing. So they could, it could easily be solvable with that. But nevertheless, if it didn't, what happens? Then every part of the state is equally distributed to all the in- in- inheritors. Including the first one. Well, that's not equal, but it's equal in topic, just different me- different measures. Now, what do we mean equally? It means like this. If you have a bunch of wheat and a bunch of barley, those things are two different things. You can't say, well, all the wheat is mine, all the barley is yours. That is swabbing our, our portions. Because when he died, you got half of the chitim, you got half of the Zorim, and he also got half of the Chitim, and he also got half of the Zorim. That is the portion. Now, if you want to take all of the Chitim, and you want to give him all of the Zorim, what actually is happening is you are agreeing to swap. That's what's happening. Because halachically, both of you own half of each one, or the respective portion of each one. That's how it happened, and now you're swabbing. But if something is considered chitim and chitim, right? It's both wheat. But this is the wheat of this place. He has one in this storage house, and he has some wheat in the other storage house. If you say, well, I take the, the wheat in this storage house, you take the wheat in that storage house, and you happen to know that these ones were exposed to rain, and the other ones were not. So these ones are susceptible to Tumah, and those ones are not. That's fine. Because they're Chitim. Right? And it's fine. Within, it's within boundaries. So when can you and when can you not say this is the topic of this Mishnah in 
um, in Masechet Demai. So Chavera, let's le- learn it now. First, the top of Chavera Mutbet. Chavera Amaretz, Shearshot Avihem Amaretz, they inherited the father. Yachol Amar Lo Tol Atach Itin Shemakom Peloni, and Niach Itin Malav Shemakom Peloni. He could say, "You take those wheat, and I take these wheat." Tol Atach Yain Shemakom Peloni, and Niach Yain Shemakom Peloni. You take those barrels of wine, I take these barrels of wine. You could do that; it's not a problem. Yes, Perera. Ava lo yomar lo tol ata lach vani avish. Can't say you take the wet ones; I take the dry ones. You can't do that because those are different, and you have inherited equally half of lach and half of yavish. Now, if you're swabbing them, then you will be in deep trouble of the flavor. Lo titem mikshol tol ata chitin vani sorim. Equally, you cannot say you take all the wheat; I take all the barley, or vice versa. You cannot do that. So what do you do? V'tani Allah, we learned on that Mishnah in Demai, Oto Chaber, that Talmi Hacham, Soref Halach Umaniach et Ayavesh. The part of Lach that he inherited, which is Tameh, his father was Amaretz, he can't use it. What do you do with that? You burn it. You have to burn it. What's the obvious question? Why can't you just leave it until next Shata Gitot? Next time of production, I say, well, my father would have been believed on the tahara of these ones, next shot, agitin, and then I'll use it. Right? So if I have a barrel of wine that, my, that the father left, it's true that now is not the time of press, but I will wait, wait six months until the time of wine production, and then it will be tahor. Why can't you do that? Says Imarab. So therefore, he, the Gemara wants to prove that you see the question he asked in the Gemara, that if the Kohen by mistake accepted the barrel from the Amaretz, you can't say wait until the next time and it will be good. You can't say. That's the Gemara's attempted proof. It says, you're not assuming, you're assuming that they're a Tamer already, or you know they're Tamer already? No, if you know the Tamer, it's the you're Tamer. You're assuming. It's a Tam. It's, a, it's like a Chalaf's Tam, right? <coughs> you don't know what it is. If you know it's Tamer, so then it's not, it doesn't become Tower because it goes through time. So why is that a Lifneiver? Why is that Lifneiver for the other brother? Because you, assu- you're, you ought to assume. Hmm. Right? So says the Gemara. This again, this gets into a whole... It's not just the Yesh Berera and Berera, which is very deep, but the Fnei Velot is very, very, very wide and, and deep concept of by the Rabbanans, by not the Rabbanans, how, how you're over on the which again, we're touching um, the surface of these sugyas, but we're not getting into the depth of it. So says the Gemara, Bedavashe Logat. We're talking about a case that it doesn't have a Shara Gito. So look, when you have wine, or olive oil, they have a clear time of production. Right? You have grapes, they, they ripen, and then everybody that has vineyards, they're doing it. This is, this is a clear season for it. Right? You have olives, they ripen, you have a clear season of olive press. But a lot of things don't have a clear season of press or production. For instance, shchar timarim. You ought to make uh, alcohol out of, out of timarim, out of uh, dates. Dates, you can leave them for whatever you want. You can start whatever you want to make shechar timarim, because timarim don't go bad. So if the father left shechar timarim, that's what we're talking about. Right? And then you can't leave it until when? There's no clear time. So you want to push us back. He says, no, maybe if it was wine, maybe if it was uh, olive oil, maybe it would have been good to leave it. So it says, Gemara, Leave it until one of the Shalosh Regalim, because we mentioned that Shalosh Regalim every Amaretz is also Neeman. Mara says, we're talking about a case of something that is not going to stay fresh and, and survive to the next Regal. We're talking right after Sukkot, next boy is going to be Pesach six months from now, and therefore it's going to go bad. All those things you have to burn. So therefore, basically, the Gemara falls off of that proof. So says the Gemara now, Ve'im Amar, he frashti netochar v'it kodesh neman. The next part of the Mishnah was, that even though that the Amaretz is not neman on Terumah, we mentioned that the Amaretz is neman on Kodesh, when? During the entire year. How about if the Amaretz brings a barrel of wine, says, well, this is um, 
like teruma or whatever it is. But I also by mistake put a revit, a whole cup of wine of Kodesh also got mixed in this. Then not. Do we say because he is Neman and Kodesh, he should be Neman on the entire be- container? Because a little bit of it is Kodesh, and on Kodesh he is Neman? Or do we say, well, this little bit is Batel uh, Berov, Batel Bishishim. And once you're not Neman and Teruma, you're not Neman and Kodesh either. You, the whole thing should be Tameh, even though that if Kodesh was alone, you would be Neman. Which one do we say? So says the Gemara. Tenan Hatam, we learned in the Mishnah in Masachat Psachim, this is in, in, in Gemara in Daftali bit. Modim bet Shamayu bet Yilel, she botkin leose Pesach, ve'en botkin leochle teruma. Now, let me give a little preface on this, and then we'll pick this up tomorrow. A person that goes to bring Korban Pesach, sometimes you have to pass through an area of Tum'ad Rabbanan. What's the area of Tum'ad Rabbanan? You have something called Beta Pras. Beta Pras is an area that we know, once upon a time you had a kever, you had a corpse buried there, and then it was Nechrash. Beta Pras, just a Nechrash. Somebody plowed the land. Now, nowadays, you, you, you dig six feet down, Back then it was not like that. They dug a little bit, they put the body there, they covered it, and zew. And then, a few years from now, somebody by mistake took a plow and plowed the land. Chazal made a gezerah de Rabbanan that within 100 amot of, of surrounding that area is called Beta Peras. Now, we have a, a Beta Pras, Shenechrash Sadeh Shenechrash Bakever, which is what we call, and then you have a Sadeh Shenevad Bakever. Now, you know, somebody was buried there. We don't know where he was buried. We know it's in this land. It was never plowed afterwards, but we don't know where he was buried. So that's a different topic. Shenechrash Bakever, that it was plowed, so what, we, we're concerned that small pieces of bone were dragged within the hundred feet. More than that, the the macharasha, the plow is not going to take more than hundred amot. But within hundred amot, we are choshesh. Now, what's the problem? Is the problem that I'm going to tent over it when I walk? Is that the problem? No, because a small body piece of body does not have tumad ohel, but you have tumad hesed. If you move. A bone of a corpse that's bigger than a seora, bigger than a barley, you become tamimit. And if you walk on this and you move it a little bit with, through your walking, it will, you will become tamim. So there are two ways. Either you have to sweep it and make sure there's nothing on the surface that will be moved with you walking, or you have to have nidash. You have to have a place that people have walked so much on it that either all the bones will break to small particles, the smaller than seora, or they will be pressed into the ground that if I walk on it, I'm not moving it at all. It's just pressed part of the ground, and therefore I'm not moving anything. I'm just walking on it, which doesn't have too much oil, and because it's not going to move, it doesn't have too much hesit. Now, the, the Gemara is going to deal with this, this p- piece of the Gemara, Masech Psachim, whether or not if I'm going to bring Koran Pesach, I have to check, how do I get through a land like that, and the comparison of that with other areas of Halakha, for Terumah, for a Kohen that's going to eat Terumah, which Bezat Hashem will continue in the days to come. <laughs>